Hey, this is Dr. Amanda from Straight Smile Solutions, straightsmilesolutions.com, and today I wanted to talk to you a little bit more about what happens in, especially in Invisalign. If you have elastics, for example, class two elastics, those go from the upper canines to the lower molars as part of your treatment plan, and perhaps your patient was too good of an elastic wearer. What, what are we looking for? And I've got this video running in the background just because it really relates to what I'm talking about and I already made the content, so I just kind of wanted to show it to you. Feel free to watch it on its own. Um, but basically, yes, it is totally possible with a class two case for a patient to just be such a good elastic wearer, and it's such a rare problem to have because usually we have the opposite problem where they're not that compliant, that you can see a huge jump. And the jump, the bite jump, is something so dramatic they go from like half step class two to like half step class three like they jump like eight nine millimeters and interesting thing is it's not necessarily jaw growth because we do a Seth and we check it's literally just teeth tipping and a little bit of an anterior interference where they kind of shift into a pseudo crossbite and this video talks about pseudo crossbites and how to recognize them and a lot of doctors freak out and they go oh no what do we do and I've seen actually a few of these, more than a few, this during this corona time where patients have um, maybe gone away, they still have a bunch of elastics, they just keep doing what they're told, but we're not really checking the bite, we're just talking about tracking and the bite gets away from them. So what to do? So this is just kind of my suggestion on what to do. And of course, each, each individual situation needs to be independently evaluated. So um, let me see if I can replay this again. Is it going to let me do that? Um, it may not. Okay. But in any case, ignore what's in the background now. I don't know what this is. Um, but in any case, each situation needs to be independently evaluated. You got to check it. You got to check articulation, see if you can manipulate the lower jaw back, find where that occlusal interference is. Take your pictures in CR, not CO. Take your pictures with some articulating paper marks and mark that premature contact. Mark where it is. It might be a very awkward bite. Then send those pictures to Invisalign and have them reset it at that articulation. And then we can fix it. If you got into that problem, assuming it's not jaw growth, it's just teeth tipping and interference. And you wouldn't know that unless you took a step and got the numbers. So we're here for you if you've got a question, if this happens. It's a good problem to have. Actually, it just shows you have a really awesome patient. Um, who just a little too awesome so we can fix it but you know you need to give the patient some time to rest without the elastics and deprogram those muscles for maybe four six eight weeks have them stay in their same aligners do not progress because the aligners you have is trying to fix a class two so that's actually gonna make the problem worse than um, the other problem so um, the worst thing to do is just to do a whole bunch of IPR during extraction so anyways hopefully that was helpful thanks so much